at breaking it. Yeah, I'm probably not going to monetize this. <laughs> I'm just doing this for my own balls. So yeah, let's try and like, for this cup, talk about something less darker than my fucked up childhood. <laughs> the weird anti-drug messaging that I got throughout my life. That honestly, I did think had a long-term effect on me. Oh yeah, I got this guy and I never used him. I don't really want to look at his face though. Ah, oh, screw up. He's already annoying. We'll just, we'll just showcase off another car here. Um, um, <laughs> another car. Let's, let's use this one because it's like... And we're gonna have the, the pink jerks. Um, sure. <laughs> like, you know. Uh, let's change this to pizza because I feel like pizza right now. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so like, let's not talk about that shit again because that was kind of like. I did think all of the anti-drug messages, which were literally like, is a 90s kid, winners don't use drugs was pounded into you at like every possible like occurrence. Kids cartoons, arcade games, video games that came to consoles, even uh, like schools. You know, I was still attending primary schools in like the late 90s. I celebrated the millennium at my primary school. September 11th happened at my primary school and everyone was like, trying to explain it to kids is really hard. I'm like, um, you know, all of that stuff happened at my primary school and I was just like, oh, okay, like, um, oh, I'm in the grass, I'm in the grass. Um, all that stuff happened in my primary school, uh, kind of years. But like, uh, yeah, there was a lot of anti-drug messaging going around at that time, and I was like, really? Nine-year-olds? And I'm thinking it was more like a kind of get them while they're uh, young so that they know early, you know, kind of thing. And it's like, yeah. And now we're at the situation where, like, weed's legal in a lot of places, and you're like, hey man, I heard that's a gateway drug, and you're like, oh wow, I was raised to be a fucking square. Uh, yeah, no fun for me. And, like, I honestly think it did, like, considering that I go to a lot of metal festivals and stuff, and you walk in there and there's just an aura of weed stank. You're just walking around the campsite and you're like, this grass smells pretty rich. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> yeah. And, like, I was like, uh, I was gonna say I'm not gonna talk about dark shit, but, like, when I was at uni, my one of my roommates was, um, addicted to crack at this point in his life. He's luckily turned his life around now. But um, I was like really fucking aggressive about it. I was like, no, you shouldn't do that. And I like didn't really realize why I was so instinctively fucking pissed off at drug takers. Now bow down to me, Emperor Velo the 27th, ruler of the galaxy. Uh, he's got a long way to play. Um, yeah, we're gonna wait for these guys to finish. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, obviously, like, the hard shit, like, uh, coke and stuff, and, yeah, that stuff's not very good for you, <laughs> like, especially if you're addicted to it, but since then, I've met a lot of people, especially considering the job I do, because, uh, actually, shocker, a lot of people who are, like, teach English as a foreign language, especially when they're, like, out of their country, have a lot of drug problems, dude. Like, so many people I know have, like, and they're just like, it's not problems, they just randomly do drugs occasionally, and then just kind of forget about them again. And they're like, oh yeah, I was smoking weed like last month, and like, or like, um, yeah, I took acid once. You know, they're not the kind of people who have got like a habit going on. Don't get lost in my exhaust. Oh, that was quite <laughs> All of annoying characters maybe on the left. 
Cool. Uh, yeah, so that was, um, yeah, okay, let's stop talking about negative things, like, what am I like? Um, yeah, so Emperor Vivo, let's talk about him. He's the antagonist from the main, um, from the, the main, the, uh, Crash Nitro Kart series, he was really poorly characterized in that game. He shows up at the beginning, he shows up at the end, you fight him once in a boss battle, he's unplayable in the game. one of the more memorable tracks, but it's kind of like, a lot of Crash Nitro parts suffered from having like a very poor identity visually. They had some nice tracks, but they just felt like they could be in any part race, so they had no like, brand personality. Like, you'd notice that like, um, <clears throat> in Crash Team Racing, every one track is named after a character or is like, referencing a level in the Crash universe from like Crash 1 to 3. Um, it just it went hot, so there's a lot of diversity. These just feel like if you took away that sign there, this could be anything. This is like, because Crash Nitro Kart was all like, oh yeah, it's out of the Crash Bandicoot world. It's, in space, and then it suffered a massive identity loss because of that. It was just like, oh, so you're gonna make the Roos cute, but without any, like, Rukuru reference, or like, you're gonna make, um, like, Crash Code, but call it Inferno Island, and it just suffered from a huge identity loss because of that. It just meant everything felt less about Crash Bandicoot, which is like, you spend money purchasing IP and then you're like kind of just ruining it by shoving a load of characters in it. It's like kind of the same problem that like Marvel Nemesis had, which is a weird place to go. <clears throat> uh yeah, it suffered from like um <clears throat> Uh, an identity loss because they were too busy people were too busy shoving their stupid OCs in <laughs> that's what it felt like you know if you ever played Marvel Nemesis which I really tried to love that game it really suffers from a big problem with like being pretty a bland and like intolerable almost kind of game where nothing fun is really happening. It has a few neat tricks, and then it's like, you can play it with friends, much like Crash Nitro Kart, but you're missing out on so much stuff, and the story mode is like, trying to really push characters that will exist for one game. Um, or show up and be the titular character. It's like, it's not like Nitrous Oxide, where right? it's like, oh, he feels like he fits into the canon. These guys don't feel like they fit into anything. But like, if you're going to talk to me about any character, one character, I really hate in the Crash Universe, is in France. Because he has the right naming convention, but he looks like oh, he when they do that. Uh, but like, um, for like an evil villain, but he's just a fucking egg <laughs> and you're just like why would why was this built like, why was this character made he could have been anything else I think it's because he's also a sign of the times, you know, because it was like around that time where you're like, 
You think like Crash 3 brought in Entropy and you were just like, oh man, Entropy looks really cool. And, and then they managed to make everything like post that not particularly great, although Crunch was alright. It was great that someone had the idea of like, hey, what if we make him? He was trying to make Crash Bemmy group like Cortex's whole thing is he experiments on animals, right, and he's trying to make a Bandicoot general and stuff, and he's messed up with Crash. Why don't we say, what if he'd actually managed to succeed? And, like, that what if was a pretty good idea. Here's a stupid egg that hypnotizes people. Not a good idea. Terrible idea. Whoever invented that should feel bad. Oh, <clears throat> yes! But, you know... I like the expansion kind of thing, like, I don't, I don't like Nina Cortex, but, like, I like that she exists. It suggests that, like, these mad scientists actually have relations and stuff. And it's like, it would have been weird if Neo Cortex was, like, had a wife. I don't know how female Neo Cortex <laughs> So it makes sense that she's, like, a Beast or something. I mean, I liked Engine as well. Engine was pretty cool. I like Engine. He used to be my main in the original game, but I kind of fell off of using him now that there's more characters to play. Ugh. God, this, guy. this guy really believes his own press releases. <laughs> like, um... <clears throat> oh. So, yeah. Thing is some dumb stuff to talk about. Ah, oh, so yeah, there was this one time me and my friends were at a pub and uh, one of my friends, Seb, was we used to play pool a lot back in those days. We had a friend and he really took pool seriously. He was really good at pool. Uh, he was even like you know, in a pool club and did championships and stuff, so it was just not fun playing. You know. Even when he was drunk, he was better than most of us sober. I was just like, uh, it makes me really uncomfortable, you know. Oh, college was a weird time, too. Um, <clears throat> but, like, this was quite funny. Um, like, we were playing, and, like, um, I was just trying to heckle him so much that I actually heckled him into winning. And like, I was just saying stupid distraction shits. Back in those times, there was a lot of meme stuff where you'd be like, You forgot your medicine! <laughs> I mean, just these stupid things like this one. Like, Look out for the ambulance! And like, just really like, in there, dumb, kind of like, trying to make you think that you're like, having a psychotic break stuff. I started making up an entire story, but it like, basically came down to like, Imagine the Wasp, and like, um, that's basically the title of this, like, thesis I'm gonna go into now, where, um, <laughs> my friend Seb was trying to, like, pop the black, he was on the opposing team, and I was trying to make him lose, and I was like, imagine the Wasp, imagine the Wasp, and he was just like, I will, I will imagine the Wasp, I will imagine his long spiky tail, I will imagine his yellow and black body, and he potted the black one's like, yeah, and I, like, for some reason we fought because we were drunk, it was hilarious, and then like, years later, one of us just says to the other, imagine the wasp, and we're just like, what the oh yeah, and we're just like, oh, why would you remind me of that? It's a weirdo. One time we went to, um, a zoo together because we're complete losers. And, um. <laughs> oh shit. That's. Um. And, like, it was 
pretty much all of us, the whole group of us. We normally used to go to theme parks and stuff, and we went, we didn't go to the zoo. And there was these black swans there. And um, <clears throat> he invented an entire story about black swans always being ninja swans. And then he was like saying how they like create mortal combat fatalities and like made some weird choreography to like how they kill people. Because he was like, you know, swans can break a guy's arms. Black, black swans, they can like assassinate people. And he was just like going on and on. And I was like, what the? <laughs> and it became a thing for so long that it became quite like a thing. <laughs> you know, it became a meme within our friends. A lot of really weird fucking shit like that. Kind of like, well, college was worse because it was like you're trying to act like an adult. You're allowed to show up in pubs and like do these and stuff, but you're very clearly like not cool enough to get into nightclubs because like in the UK pubs are like where old men go to have like a quiet beer and chat and like watch sports. They're like the sports bars of our nation, but like they're really like old. Like they kind of cross with like um old working man's clubs where like the, these old guys will just sit there and just ramble on. There's no girls there really unless you're bringing your girlfriend with you. And it's just you guys sat in like a... Oh no. Oh. And it's just really uncomfortable. Because <laughs> you're trying to be cool and you're hanging out in a pub. <laughs> and like all the cool people are going to like these nightclubs. And like, we had this horrible conversation, me and my friends had this conversation with our parents, because they were like, going to nightclubs in the 1980s, right? And they would be telling us, you can't, you won't get into the club. And they would be like, dressed in casually, and I would be like, what the hell are you talking about? No, you've got to dress nice, otherwise they're not going to let you in your club. And I was like, you do know what nightclubs are like now, right? And they're like, no, you've got to dress nice. So I was having to wear like a dress shirt on my first few nights out going to the clubs because my parents were so adamant that you wouldn't get in. And one of my friends had this as well and showed up in a full goddamn suit. And it was like, our parents are so out of touch because I think they thought in the 1980s that like, maybe that was a thing. And they're like, mate, you're not going to get into your nightclub. And I was just like, um, really though? Luckily, we dropped that pretty much immediately afterwards. <clears throat> oh, man. Weird times, man. <laughs> 